Hello, today I'm going to show you this very nice project. It's already built, but I will go to the complete process now. It seems like a power supply, and yes, it is indeed. This is the $60 power supply for battery maintaining while ignition is on. And this is made out of this HP power supply, which is, you can see, 12 volts, 100 amps. But of course, we could not use those 12 volts to power up a vehicle, so we need more than 12 volts. So that's why we need to do some modifications and to solder three resistors. As you can see, the first one is 110, or in my case, 120 kilo ohms, because I could not find 110. This first resistor will basically disable the over voltage protection because the power supply is meant to be used only in 12 volts. And the second resistor on this board is 22 kilo ohms, which would trick the power supply to think that it's producing less than 12 volts. And that way we could ramp up the voltage using the built-in potentiometer. And also we need a resistor and a short circuit uh, from one of the pins to ground in order to power the power supply without a PC. So here we have the power supply connected. Currently it's at 13.4 volts because the car is in with ignition on, so there is a very high power consumption. So let's check the actual current that this power supply is providing now. In order to check the power delivery of this power supply, we will use the vehicle's measuring values. In order to do that, we open VCDS or any other diagnostic tool. We go to CAN Gateway Module 19. And once we have connection with the Gateway Module, we select Advanced measuring values and here we select voltage terminal 15 and voltage terminal 30 so the terminal 30 voltage is the voltage of the battery current voltage of the battery and, volt and terminal 15 is the voltage of the ignition they should be the same or very close to each other and we also search for battery current so this battery current value is the actual current that is going in or out to the battery and here we could see that we have positive almost 15 amps going into the battery. So currently the vehicle is with ignition on, so we have around 25 amps consumption of the vehicle and we have additional 15 amps going into the battery. So we have total of almost 40 amps currently consumed by the vehicle. Of course, if the battery is um, discharged, this current going to the battery will be even higher. But now the battery is charged and we see that we have around 10 to 15 amps, just a standby current going into the battery. So we can see that the power supply is working just perfectly. This power supply is the DPS 1200 FBA. There are multiple variations of this power supply, but I choose this one because it's the most uh, widely available and there are a lot of uh, tutorials and a lot of schematics on it, so uh, there are already uh, ready solutions in order to get whatever voltage you need from this power supply. And the other modifications uh, except the voltage generations are this 3D printed case consisting of two parts, two separate pieces. This is just a base. It's doing nothing, but the purpose here is to get a separation from the bare metal, for example, when you leave it in the vehicle, 
Uh, so there will be a better heat dissipation. And the second part, of course, is the case where the cable connections inside of the power supply are covered. And we have a digital voltmeter here. So once we plug the power supply into the mains voltage, it boots up and we have our voltage. You can see, I set, I set my power supply to 13.6. In most of the tutorials and instructions, the power supply needs to be set to around 14 or even 14.2 volts. I did that uh, initially, but because my car is with a very big uh, um, battery and there are a lot, a lot of consumers here, we talk about a lot of amps, and the power supply is set to 14.2 volts in, and when initially connecting to the battery terminals right there, the power supply seems to be overcurrenting and it shuts down itself. So that's why I lower the voltage, 13.6, and now it's working very stable when the ignition is on, even with all the consumers. The problem is not the continuous current that this power supply needs to provide, but the initial one, which was a problem in my case. It seems that this is only on my side. Uh, I've seen a lot of other cars, even BMW 5 Series, which seems that they don't have such high power consumption electrically, but of course this VAC, it's a VAC. There are always problems. So that's why I've set mine to 13.6, but you can set yours to 14. Even. One thing to keep in mind is that you should always firstly connect the power supply to the power grid and then connect the terminals because if you do it vice versa, the actual the car will start powering the power supply. There, there will be no uh, problems. Uh, nothing will burn out, but it's not going to work when you plug it into the wall after that. Yeah, so this power supply costs around... I got it for 30 euros uh, locally here in Bulgaria, but in eBay or other sites you could get those uh, for a maximum of 40 euros. 40, 50 euros even. If you're lucky, you can get... 20 euros. Here, if I speed up. So, you need to use this exact model if you want to follow these guides. There are multiple guides for multiple other models, but they are uh, less, less powerful power supplies, which I don't recommend. And this, given that this is the cheapest one, and it's 1.2 kilowatts, I think this is the best option out there. 